our Savior, even after the resurrection, shows up with five gaping wounds in his body. In this appearance to the disciples, he leads off by showing us his sores, which means, among other things, he never lived in Buckhead. I mean, it's our culture to never let anybody see our wounds. Most of us would rather die again than to show somebody where we've been wounded. Well, I've been reading Brene Brown again. I referenced her in a sermon a year or so ago. She's a qualitative researcher from the University of Houston. But she writes for a popular audience. Uh, the, the book I read in the last couple of weeks is about people who live a wholehearted life. Uh, she, lots of interviews about people she had identified as living really fully. She tried to decide what these people had in common. And among the many uh, things that she learned, one difference in them and many of us is that they seek lives of belonging rather than fitting in. Now, I had never thought about the distinction of that before belonging instead of fitting in. She talks about the fact that most of us give most of our attention and energy, considerable energy, to fitting in. We buy the right house, and then if they don't have them already, we get the right countertops, and then if we need to upgrade the stove so that it will be like the stove everybody else has, we'll get the right stove top, we will be sure to carry the right tote bag. We need to fit in. And so some of us even engage in activities that will fit in, bucket activities like yoga and soccer, not out of a love for yoga or soccer, but so that we'll fit in. And our kids carry the right book bag, all wear the same lightweight jacket, listen to the same music their friends are listening to. Whether they like that music or not, it's about fitting in. According to Brown, we spend most of our energy trying to fit in, unusual energy trying to fit in, but belonging is very different. Belonging happens when we feel free to be our real self, and we're loved anyway. It involves being able to love jazz even if the rest of the kids are into hip-hop. Belonging involves preferring motocross to soccer just because you prefer motocross to soccer. It has nothing to do with what you think other people are going to affirm you for. It's the trust that you can just be you and be loved anyway. Belonging involves showing our wounds without the fear of rejection. And here we are a week after Easter. And our Lord is showing the people closest to him his wounds. Do you know how we say Jesus in sign language? Do you realize that the leading symbol of the Christian faith is a cross? Where does woundedness fit on this side of Easter? However uncomfortable it makes us, Jesus leads on this side of Easter with his woundedness. We're a week removed from Easter morning. The disciples are in hiding Two weeks ago, remember, these Galileans followed Jesus into Jerusalem. They were waving palm branches. They were shouting Hosanna. In the week that followed, they saw their Lord arrested, tried, crucified. And three days later, the accounts were that his body was gone from the tomb. Some were saying that he rose from the dead. Now, understandably, this was not a theory that all of the disciples embraced. 
For some, they thought that a grave robber stealing the body of Jesus was a little bit more plausible than a resurrection. Now, let's keep in mind, we are more than 2,000 years ahead of this story. We have had that much Christian tradition. Most of us have heard about the resurrection since we were children, and it still takes a double gulp of faith. So, imagine, just a week later, these followers in hiding, scared for their lives, and some of them are trying to convince the others, the others who saw the hanging, bleeding, gasping, dying Jesus, that after three days he just got up. Well, they're back and forth, back and forth. I believe it, I believe it. Mary was so wound up. But wherever a given disciple might have been on this internal debate, one thing was for sure. They knew they were in trouble. They were in trouble with the authorities, and one thing was for sure, if the authorities caught them and they died for it, they weren't getting up again. So they're hiding in this room. And the scripture says that they're hiding for fear of the Jews, but that might need some clarification. They were not afraid of Jewish people. They were Jewish people. They're afraid of the soldiers who saw them attending Jesus on the way into town. They have been identified as Christ followers. They're in trouble with the authorities because the trouble that Jesus stirred up extends to them. And if they're found, a cross might be their fate too. And one thing is for certain. If they're found and put on a cross, they're not coming back for the dead. So they're in hiding. They're eating together. They're wringing their hands. They're going back and forth, recounting what Mary had said about the stone being rolled away. Some are making the case for the resurrection. Some are still skeptical. They come and go from the room, but they come and go in shadows because this is a nerve-wracking time, they are afraid. They're vulnerable and afraid, hiding for fear of the Jews, hiding behind locked doors. They are Jesus followers. And if they are vulnerable about their true self, it would expose them. Now, we've already acknowledged that we live behind locked doors too. We do not want to risk the vulnerability of showing each other our true self either. We can't lead with brokenness. We can't talk about the ways we're afraid. We can't show our fear or our wounds. What would other people think? So we keep our doors locked because we're afraid we're not enough. People will not love us like we are, so we try to fit in rather than belong. Remember, belonging happens when we're vulnerable about who we really are and find a place in the group anyway. Fitting in happens when we accept the group's code of acceptance, and it's just easier to keep our doors locked and try to fit in. According to Brown, this is the voice of the gremlin we hear. You can't really love yourself yet. You're not pretty enough or skinny enough or successful enough or rich enough or talented enough or happy enough or smart enough or feminine enough or masculine enough or productive enough or nice enough or strong enough, or tough enough, or caring enough, or popular enough, or creative enough, or well-liked enough, or admired enough, or contributing enough. So maybe you ought to just stay behind a locked door and stay afraid. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced as they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus has come to bring peace in spite of our locked doors. Now you know that this word peace is a layered word. It it means more than the absence of violence. Peace, shalom, wholeness, completeness, restored, abundance, all okayness. I don't think that's a word. Peace. Our locked doors do not hamper Jesus. The risen, wounded Christ is showing up to you to say wholeness, abundance, completeness, peace be with you. There was a one-season television show. It wasn't even a, a whole season. It was in the 1990s called Nothing Sacred. Anybody remember seeing a not full season of this? It was about the inner workings of a a Roman Catholic parish in Chicago, but but a lot of Catholic believers found it to be in poor taste. Uh, They boycotted the show, lobbied against it until it was pulled before the season was complete. But there was one scene in one of the episodes that did air that I found intriguing the least likely of the priests in that parish, it was his turn to preach the sermon after Easter. And this is the question he asked in his sermon. If God could raise Jesus from the dead, why would he leave five gaping wounds? That's a reasonable question. If Jesus appears raised from the dead, why not just finish up the work and clean the wounds up? Well, the answer the young priest offered in his TV sermon was this. Perhaps the wounds were latching on places. Our Lord breaks through locked doors shows us the ugly wounds and says, peace be with you. And we will never find our peace place if we continue to hide in our fear. If we continue to hide for fear that we will be found out for who we really are, we will not know true shalom. We must hear the words of Jesus and believe that the resurrected Christ has brought a declaration of wholeness, restoration, peace. Fear and woundedness are redeemed if we can hear the words of Jesus and believe it. By the way, the word wound in the Latin is vulnus. Wound is the root word for vulnerability. The disciples were locked in because they were afraid and they felt vulnerable, and Jesus shows up with his wounds. Wounds met wounds in a room where peace happened. Healing happens when woundedness meets woundedness. So maybe the TV priest was right. Perhaps wounds are latching on places. Or, the way the prophet Isaiah declared it, by his wounds we are healed. Garrison Keeler, the great storyteller of Lake Wobegon, said that Easter is the time of the year when Christians ask themselves two questions. Do I really believe all this stuff? And if so, why do I live this way? If we do believe this, why do we keep living behind locked doors and afraid? Why do we keep trying to fit in? 
Why do we keep hiding behind a false self if I really believe that the God of the universe loves me as if I were the only one to love? If I believe that the risen Christ breaks through locked doors of fear and declares, peace be with you. If I really believe that in spite of all of my insecurities and imperfections, I am loved by God, then I ought to be able to risk something of my own vulnerability. And the wounds might become a latching on place. What would happen if we formed a community here where people are not at all concerned about fitting in because it's the safest place they know to belong? What would it look like if we showed each other our wounds and were vulnerable enough to risk belonging here rather than fitting in here? What if Second Ponce became the safest place in our orbit? A place where we knew our children would be loved? The one place in Buckhead we felt like we could completely be ourselves. What if we allowed woundedness? What if we encouraged vulnerability? What if we loved each other not in spite of our brokenness but because of it? By his wounds we are healed. And maybe our wounds will find healing and heal others if we can learn to risk belonging rather than continuing to try to fit in. But for this to be true, we must first believe Jesus. We must first believe that Jesus breaks through locked doors to bring peace and wholeness. The disciples are hiding because they're afraid their association with Jesus will cause harm to them. They're afraid and broken. They have betrayed their love for Jesus. They're hiding because their association with Jesus is something that threatens, and so they're behind a locked door. And Jesus breaks through that locked door and says the same thing twice. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. When Jesus starts repeating himself, we might ought to pay attention. How do you need to hear that word today? Each of us brought into the room some fear that has left some door locked. So when you visualize the risen Christ meeting you in your woundedness, showing you his wounds, and telling you twice right to your face that he has come to bring peace, where in your life do you need to hear that and believe it all the way down to your toes? Whatever you're hiding from, whatever you're afraid of, whatever wounds you hope will forever be hidden, Jesus has shown up where your wounds and my wounds meet where our woundedness meets his wounds, and in the mix of all of that, Jesus has come to bring peace. Peace. And a place Jesus calls the church where we can truly belong to each other in Christ's family. How will you respond to the invitation to wholeness? And Jesus' call to peace. Let's stand and sing.